All right, what's the chip of the day? It's an oldie but goodie, the LM324. You will see a lot of those. Um, it is a quad op amp, and uh, it's really old school, but you'll still see them around. Uh, one of the nice things about the LM324 is it can operate on a single supply, so a grounded ground plus a plus a voltage, and it, it can operate at very low voltages. They can operate at three volts. So they're very popular in 5 volt systems. You can run it um, between ground and 5 volts and have an op amp operation. Uh, so that's why you, th I think that's why you see a lot of them. Uh, and, and it's quad, it was one of the first quad op amps, I think, uh, in the old days as well. Um, we'll find out that it does have its limitations, but uh, uh, it is a, uh, it is a standard pinout. So the, there are a lot of quad op amps that have this standard pinout. The uh, plus inputs are near the center, and the, the uh, power is a bit odd. You would have thought the negative would have been on this side and the positive would have been on this side, but they did it the other way around. So the ground is over here on pin 11, and uh, the plus V is over on pin 4. So that's a bit funny in my head, but uh, otherwise, otherwise it's an op amp. And um, I'm going to be showing you a circuit that uses four op amps, okay? Since it's a quad, let's quad. Let's do that. Uh, let me change the camera a little bit here. All right. So um, I'm going to be running this single-ended. So I'm going to be running this at zero to twelve volts, and I'm going to use all four op amps. And whenever you use a uh, voltage system where it's zero and a voltage, you still need to have a middle reference. You, Usually you have plus and minus voltages in ground, but since you don't have that, you've moved it all up, right? You used to have plus and minus in ground, but you need to move that all up for zero and 12 volts. You need to have six volts in the middle. You need to have a ground reference that's, that's six volts, and then the op amp can do its stuff. And so you can just put in six volts because op amps don't need a lot of current on their little inputs. But sometimes when you have a system where there's lots of things attached to that six volts, you kind of want to what we call stiffen that six volts. You want to have a little bit of, uh, of grunt behind it. And so I'm going to use one of the op amps just to generate the plus six rail. And you don't need it in this application, but I just wanted to show you this technique because you, you might find it. You need to calculate your circuit to how much return path the six volts will see. And sometimes you find out that it's actually quite a bit. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our, our full voltage, our ground 12, and we're going to have, have it split in half, and then we're going to buffer it. So now we have a nice stiff 6 volts. And we're going to use that in, in two places here. And uh, this first section is an oscillator. And this is going to oscillate back and forth, whack, 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 whack. And then we're going to run that through a low-pass filter and smooth out the edges. We're going to buffer that. I've got to have Gotta have a dot there. Okay, we're gonna buffer that, and then we're gonna send it through a comparator, okay? And we're gonna compare it to six volts. Remember, we've shifted everything up, so if we wanna do zero crossing, it's actually six volt crossing. And so we'll take a look at this, um, uh, this situation. Now, I'm gonna first show it to you using a different op amp, okay? So we're talking about an LM324, but I wanna talk about another op amp today that is my favorite. Um, it's probably still old school in a lot of people's heads, but that is a TL, I think it's a TLC, yeah, a TLC um, 274, okay? And a 274 is kind of a drop-in replacement for the LM. This, is, this can do single-ended as well, but it's a more modern part. It's a CMOS part. It's faster, blah, 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 okay? So I'm going to first show you the circuit. I'm going to put in this part first, the, the TLC274, and we'll see the operation of this uh, circuit. And then we'll see how the LM324 operates in the same circuit. Okay, that's what I want to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this node here. Okay, that just should be the output of the oscillator. Okay, and the output of the oscillator is just a square wave. It's going up and then down and then up and then down, up and down. And so... Um, that's great. So let's take a look at this point here. Let me move my scope probe over. And that will be, after it goes through this low pass filter, that should be um, rounding off the edges of my square wave, right? 
And sure enough, we've put in a RC time constant. So we're ramping up and ramping down and ramping up and ramping down. And uh, you could put that into a second stage and make it into kind of a little sine wave. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that, that, that kind of a, a triangle wave that I've just generated, and we're going to run that through a comparator. We can compare it at 6 volts, okay? And so let me move my scope probe over. And there we go. Now we have a square wave again, right? And so I think it makes a lot of sense, right? We start with a oscillator. We round it off, and then we square it up again. All right, so that's, that's our four op amps doing their thing. All right, so now I am going to remove the op amp, and I'm going to put in the LM324, and we'll see how, we'll see how that does. Okay, like I said, they're pin compatible, so you can just pop it right in. All right, so let's take a look at the the uh, let's take a look at the oscillator, and the oscillator looks really weird. Okay, looks really weird. First of all, it's much much slower. Then you can say, well, why was it much much slower? Right? It it, it should be an I RC time constant. So why is it slower? Um, well, we'll get to that. Um, but let's just say, that for sake of argument, um, this is what your circuit does. And the reason it looks kind of like what it does is it's a slew rate. The op amp can only move the voltage on a linear slope. And whatever that slope is, that's as fast as it can go, right? This is the, oops, I always do that touching the scope. Um, that is the limitation of the slew rate of the oscilloscope. And so that kind of slows everything down. And the fact it slows it down so much, the oscillator oscillates at a slower frequency. All right. All right. So then we're going to run it through the low pass filter. And oops, let's go probe fell off. And our, uh, because we're at a lower frequency, our low pass filter is making it more like a sine wave. Okay. So that's nice. Um, and then we're going to run that through a uh, comparator and square it back up and square it back up. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, again, we're slew rate limited, and we're terribly slew rate limited, and it's just not doing anything correct. It's just, it's just not right. Now I could, let's see if I can grab a, uh, let me grab a capacitor here, see if I can slow down the uh, oscillation of my op amp. Oh, man, I'm going to short something out here. Oh, there we go. Um, and so I've slowed the, uh, the oscillator way, way down. And it's, it, the comparator is working just fine, right? It's only when we're at this fast, fast go around that we're slew rate limited. So if you're designing this, you have to know under what conditions will a 324 operate for you. It is slew rate limited. And it's quite severely slew rate, slew rate limited. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the data sheet. All right, so you read the data sheet, it mentions nothing about slew rate on the front. And if I go through all of these numbers that these data sheets have, there's no slew rate. That does not tell you slew rate anywhere in the numbers. So you have to go to one of these pictures, okay? So sometimes the graphs are the only data you get from the, uh, from the makers of these things. And the only data that I could really find was this one. Voltage follower pulse response. So if you brought in a square wave, it ends up with this, these slopes. So this is the slew rate of the, uh, of the op amp. And we can kind of read off of here. We're going about a two, two and a half volt excursion, so not a very big excursion. And it's taking five microseconds, taking five microseconds to go, to go that distance. Um, and I think this is kind of under ideal circumstances and stuff too. So I don't know, but you can see with the, uh, the other part, this, uh, oops, let's zoom back out the, uh, TLC 274, uh, actually right on the front page, it mentions high slew rate. Yeah. Uh, low bias currents and high slew rate. So they, they're touting the slew rates right on, right on the front page. And, 
that number section, they actually have something that's here. It says slew rate at unit again. And it says that we can get down to uh, about, uh, let's see, about six volts. Volts one PPP. We're somewhere in between these two, but yeah, we're, we're somewhere to compare it to that other data sheet. Um, we're probably right around maybe five five point two volts per microsecond. So, what used to take five microseconds now we can do in one microsecond or better. Okay, these are these are typical. So. It's at least five times faster, but I think it's much more than that. Um, so once again, uh, be worried about slew rate. Uh, sometimes it can crop its ugly head. So uh, usually what you'll do is you'll, you'll build a circuit, okay? And it'll do something weird like that. And the, your first response is, oh, I must have wired it wrong, right? And you go around and around and around trying to troubleshoot this thing and say, I, I did everything right. <laughs> and uh, find yourself in a situation where, oh, I was just slew rate limited. Um, and uh, if you po probe around in the circuit, uh, you'll start to find maybe some clues. Whenever you see a straight line at a pretty big angle, that's a really good indication that, yeah, you're probably slew rate limited because uh, capacitors don't give you a straight line, right? They give you a roundy bit um, like like here. We have roundy bits here, right? But if you see straight lines at an angle, that's slew rate limited uh, limitations of the uh, of the op amp. 